Well, the High Sierra Energy Foundation is an Energy Upgrade California Grant Award winner. That's for the second year in a row. Sierra Wave Media's Rob Gill talked with Pam Bold. We're excited to have recently been granted the Energy Upgrade California Community Ambassador Grant, which provides us the ability to get out to our community and provide energy efficiency resources for them to save money and keep California golden. We have this will be our second year and it was a competitive um, process and they had chose 25 community-based organizations throughout California. Well, we will be out in our community at different events like Palooza Palooza, the Tri-County Fair, um, the Home Show, Earth Day, these kinds of events and celebrations. Everyone. Uh, you know, everyone has the ability to make small changes in their, um, the way that they use energy. They can either, you know, do projects like automation, they can simply turn off lights, use less water. E everyone has a role in this. We are a rural and hard to reach community. And um, that's really where a lot of um, the Public Utilities Commission and, and a lot of people in the state realize that it's just harder to reach these people. Well, there's a great resource in the energyupgradeca.org website, and you can do everything from doing actually your own personal energy action plan um, to finding rebates and just a wealth of information on that site. All right, thanks, Pam, and congratulations to Rick Phelps and the High Sierra Energy Foundation. Well, last week, the National Park Service announced $15 million in support of 69 projects in 63 parks, including almost $75,000 to Manzanar National Historic Site to construct a historically accurate latrine. The non-working latrine and its exhibits will complement the other buildings in Block 14. The Block 14 demonstration block gives visitors a sense of the living conditions endured by the more than 11,000 Japanese Americans in Manzanar during World War II. Now, the funding will be matched by more than $150,000 in donations from Friends of Manzanar and private donors. Now, the National Park Service's Centennial Challenge Program leverages partnership to improve visitor services, support outreach to new audiences, and the press release notes reinvigorate national parks while forging connections with communities. Congress provided $15 million for the Centennial Challenge projects, which will be matched by almost $33 million for more than 90 park partners. The 69 projects total almost $48 million located at 63 parks in 38 states. We are pleased to receive this Centennial Challenge funding and appreciate the generosity of donors, said Manzanar Superintendent Bernadette Johnson. She continued, as I have talked with former incarcerees, they recall being forced to use the communal latrines as one of the most degrading experiences in Manzanar. The desire to see a latrine building reconstructed with exhibits is a frequent comment from former incarcerees as well as site visitors. Now, the reconstructed latrine with 10 toilets, a sink, and a shower room. Press release notes will powerfully illustrate deeply personal experiences, such as those by Mary Sukamoto decades later. She said, I guess the Army's latrine is the same everywhere. For us women and children, this was something which we just couldn't. It was a shock. I remember we got sick. We couldn't go. We didn't want to go. It was smelly and it was dirty. In the shower, the water was poured over you and there were no partitions and it was so cramped that we almost touched each other. It was very humiliating. Manzanar National Historic Site also is hosting a special film screening of the Manzanar Fishing Club. This is in honor of Inyo County Schools 2016 Community Reads Salmon Fishing in the Yemen. Now that showing is set for Saturday, February 13th at 1 p.m. For more information, you can contact Net Manzanar National Historic Site 760-878-2194 extension 3310 or the website nps.gov slash mans. 
Well, Rose Bracken of Bishop Elementary won first place in the Inyo County Spelling Bee, sponsored by Altrusa. It was held last week at Jill Kinmont Booth School in Bishop. 25 students from local elementary and middle schools participated. 16 students made it to the final round. The winners of the competition, again, first place, Rose Bracken from Bishop Elementary. Second place, Marty Iman of Home Street and third place went to Lindsey Rowan of Home Street representing Inyo County at the elementary state B in April will be Lindsey Rowan and Rose Bracken. A Selters and Marty Amon will represent Inyo County at the junior high spelling B in May. You can see the full press release on SierraWave.net. Well, boing boing, it's described as a sexy nonstop comedy. It's the latest production from the Mammoth Lakes Repertory Theater. Boing Boing, written by Mark Camaletti, translated from French by Beverly Cross, revised by Francis Evans, and directed by Sheridan Brobner, was the winner of the 2008 Tony Award Best Revival of a Play. Now, Boing Boing is about a French playboy who juggles three fiancés, all flight attendants. Now, with the careful planning and the reluctant assistance of his wacky housekeeper, keeps all of his lovers' schedules separate. Weather delays send his elaborate love life into a tailspin in what is called a retro comedy. Boing Boing stars Jeremy Goyko, Tyler Lovell, Priscilla Toledo, Shonda Duro, Jesse Steele, and Juliana Olenko. Play will run from February 4th through the 21st, Thursday through Saturday, 7 p.m., Sunday at 4 p.m. at the Edison Theater in Mammoth Lakes. You can see the website, edisontheater.org, for tickets and more information. We'll be back with a weather report.